Learning module one. In this learning module, we are going to study simulation of a very common uh, flow configuration in fluid mechanics, which is parallel flow over a flat plate. We, we will be using ANSYS Fluent. Um, so consider flow over, f over a flat plate according to the following schematic. Uh, a parallel flow over a stationary plate will be simulated and the results will be compared with Blasius uh, analytical solution. So as we know, if we have a flat plate, stationary flat plate um, exposed to a parallel flow, then there will be a boundary layer formed on, on top of the plate and uh, the fluid particles inside the boundary layer will be uh, feeling the presence of this stationary plate while the flow particles that are outside the boundary layer they will not be uh, feeding the presence of the plate. Let's see if we can use uh, ANSYS Fluent to simulate this uh, configuration. So we assume the length of the, um, the plate is one meter and the parallel flow is air at a free stream velocity of one meters per second. So note that if we find the Reynolds number um, at the end of this plate, then uh, the value will be uh, laminar. So we, we have that in mind. Okay, now I'm going to execute ANSYS. Uh, the way we do it, we find um, ANSYS 18.1 then we click on workbench 18.1 here workbench as we know is um, kind of a software that organizes the simulation flow um, it does not do any specific thing by itself but it kind of uh, organizes the uh, different parts of the simulation so when once we have the workbench uh, executed we will uh, be seeing this page so there are a bunch of modules that ANSYS has we can do several things with that but today we are focusing on fluid flow using Fluent so I'm gonna drag and drop this to generate a flow of um, simulations so different parts of a simulation using um, ANSYS Fluent is shown here so as you see we can generate geometry we can mesh the geometry uh, we set up our experiment our uh, computational problem and execute the uh, simulation once the results are generated they will be sent automatically to solution and to my um, post processing software which is um, cft post and you will see it here okay now before moving forward I would like to save this um, simulation I, I choose the address that I want module 1 flat plate and I call this workbench file module 1 as well and I save the, um, uh, the computation so now I have a blank template uh, if I click on any of these uh, icons it will execute a new uh, software for me which I can do uh, specific things for example I'm gonna right click on geometry and um, execute new design modeler geometry it is going to open a new um, package for me which I, I will be using to generate uh, the model uh, so since this will be a 2D geometry, I click on the Z axis um, that will generate a 2D plane on XY plane. Uh, I would like to change some settings. I want to see a 2D grid with the snaps. Major grids that I want to see is, uh, let's say, 0.1 meter um, and mm, I would like to also have uh, 10 steps in a major space grid. Okay, that generates a grid for me. Now I go to draw 
I am going to draw a, a rectangle which essentially tell uh, provides us with uh, the entire solution domain so I click here and then here just roughly um, then I should assign some dimensions here so when we do a 2d geometry anything on the x-axis uh, will be the, the work on the 2d uh, geometry the work will be done on an xy plane so now what we have is this configuration uh, uh, the solution domain so the uh, the bottom line here will be our uh, plate while everything you see here is going to be the air that's going to be simulated and the left side is one boundary right side is the other boundary and top surface is my third uh, boundary so let's assign dimensions so if I go to dimensions and click on horizontal then I can click here um, or it's better to yeah just click here click on general then assign h1 the length is going to be one meter and this guy the the vertical line v2 will simply be uh, we can assign 0.5 uh, meters now what we have here um, is uh, this sketch. Now in the next step I'm going to so if I open this we have a sketch this is our sketch I will be clicking on um, concept and we want to generate a surface from a sketch so I click on sketch uh, surface from a sketch and I select this I click on apply under base objects and then click on generate up here when I do that the software is, has generated a, um, a, a surface for me so what you see in gray here is actually the air that's going to be simulated the bottom boundary here is my plate the left boundary is where the flow is going to be entering so for example we know that the velocity is constant here uh, on the right side it's our uh, outlet so the flow eventually will leave our solution domain here we can just assume that's a constant pressure boundary like the pressure of ambient and uh, the top surface we can either select it as a symmetry line uh, or generate a um, uh, pressure outlet as well but both will give us uh, pretty much same results but since this is a very simple geometry we are almost uh, done with that so I'm going to click save or go to file and then click save project again now I can close this package note that there is a check mark next to geometry which is telling me that the geometry is working and um, it can safely be transferred to the mesh now when I click on mesh generator it's going to execute uh, another package for me which we will be using to uh, create a 2d mesh it will take some time to generate the mesh so again I can click on Z to go to 2d view um can zoom in and zoom out move this as i want uh, if i simply click on generate mesh it's going to generate roughly the worst mesh possible because there is no, there are no controlled over uh, what we want so if we cannot really use this mesh although it's the default of the software because uh, it does not have characteristics that we want for example we know that near a solid boundary there will be a huge gradient of velocity very sharp changes of velocity here so we want to have more 
grid points near the surface because that includes the high gradients. Therefore, we need to modify that. So I can click on mesh and go to insert. And then first uh, I assign a, f uh, a face meshing uh, so that um, I can click here on this geometry that enables me to select a face actually. Click here and apply it. Uh, and I can generate mesh again. Still uh, not that much good but the lines are now very straight. That's because we have a face meshing. Now again, I right click on mesh, go to insert, and the next step, I'm going to control the number of uh, grid points that I have on each boundary. I start with one of them. Let's go to sizing. I clicked on mesh, right clicked on mesh, then clicked on sizing. Then up here, I have this icon that helps me find, select an edge. So I click on edge. And uh, while I push control bottom, I select top and bottom surfaces, or top and bottom lines, basically, and then click apply here. Now I have selected both of these uh, boundaries. Now. On this information site here, I have if I can change various things that will help me control the number of uh, grid points. For example, I want uh, to have control over number of divisions. So I click here, number of divisions. Instead of one, I um, select 50. And I select and I change the behavior from soft to hard because I want this to be a hard requirement. And then again, I can generate mesh. And if you click on this mesh icon, it will go, it's going to actually show you the mesh. Uh, there are, of course, more grid points in both directions, but still it's not giving me the clustering of nodes near the solid boundary that I really want. So again, I'm right clicking on the mesh, insert sizing. This time I uh, only select the left surface and click apply. Then I come here and change the type from element size to number of divisions. And I would like to have 60 divisions here. I uh, want the behavior to be hard. Uh, here's the tricky part. So see, it says the bias type, no bias, which essentially is going to generate a uniform mesh for me. But I do want the mesh to be biased. So I can select, for example, this uh, bias factor. Uh, some new menus will appear when I change the bias type. Uh, the bias factor is essentially the ratio of the largest no uh, cell over the smallest cell. Let's just put 70 here. As you see, even on this schematic, I expect to have a more clustered mesh here and more coarse mesh here. That's what I want. Uh, so if I click generate mesh, at this point, I'm going to see this, which is kind of what I wanted but it is not a uniform and pretty mesh. I want all the nodes to be clustered close to bottom. In order to do that, I again do another sizing, but this time I select um, the edge on the right, then click apply. Now I go to number of element, number of divisions, number of divisions, I want 60 divisions here behavior is hard and I will have a, a bias with a bias factor of 70 the same as uh, the left boundary so as you see the appearance of the nodes is not what I want that is it is actually the reverse of what I want in order to do that I can come here and say reverse bias 
and then select, select this again and select apply and then that will fix it and now I have more clustered mesh near the surface. Now again I click on generate mesh it takes very quickly to generate this mesh because it's very easy. Now this is a pretty good uh, mesh for my configuration because if I zoom in here you'll see that there are very small uh, grid points near the surface and the grids are kind of grow in size as the gradient of velocity is actually uh, reducing. So at this point I've done my mesh. In the next step before I proceed to um, defining um, the simulation or going to the next step I have to assign some names. So in order to do that, I first start with selecting uh, the surface, the whole surface. I right click on it. I first clicked on uh, the icon that lets me uh, select the surface, then on the surface and then right click. Then I have I go down here and find create named selection. Create name selection is a way that we kind of tag different parts of a model. These tags will later be used in the uh, in the simulation. So it's a good idea to do a better job of, of tagging. For example, I'm going to call this um, air flow and click OK. The name selections will appear here. So if you click on it, it's telling me, OK, you assigned airflow to the whole surface. Now I click on the edge controller up here and then I can select the left boundary, right click on it and go again to the create name selection. And I call this uh, inlet because I want it to be the inlet of air close. I again go ahead, select the right edge, right click, create name selections. That would be uh, outlet. Click OK. So another name selection appears under name selection in the tree. Uh, this surface is my plate. So I click on the boundary, right click, create name selection. I can just simply call it a plate. And click OK. The top surface, right click, name selection. Uh, this one does not really matter much because it, it's going to be far away from the plate, but just for the um, for the heck of it, let's call it far uh, field pressure. And then click OK. You can call it anything you want. Now, at this point, we're ready to save the project again. And once we do that, then we're ready to close this package and move on um, to the next level, which is initiating the Fluent software and uh, adjusting and uh, setting up our model. Before doing that, sometimes we see uh, a sign like this under Mesh, uh, which is telling us there is an update needed. So I right click here. Uh, and I click on update. It just makes sure the mesh is ready for uh, my solver, uh, which is ANSYS, ANSYS Fluent. It'll take a, a moment. Once it's done, you will see the check mark. So the mesh is good and the mesh is sent to the solver, which is ready for us to be uh, set up. So again, I click on setup. Uh, this Fluent Launcher will appear for me, which gives me some, some options. For example, I can always click on Double Precision that increases my accuracy. I recommend that you do it for all calculations that you do. Then Processing Options, you can either choose to run uh, the simulation with only one CPU core computational core or you can choose to have a parallel. Uh, the fact or the choice between these two depends on a variety of things. First of all you do need to actually have uh, multiple number of computational cores. In order to do that if I 
go to the Windows Task Manager and go to Performance, you'll see this computer that I'm using, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight computational cores. Um, and I can increase the number of uh, cores that is that ANSYS is going to use to eight. If I don't do this, if I go with the default and select serial, it's just going to use one of those cores and my computations will take more time. Uh, depending on the availability of a license, you might be able to do parallel processing and you may not be able to do it. So this time I'm going to select on parallel because I know I have capabilities and increase this number of processes to eight. Then I click on OK. When I click on OK, then uh, the Fluent software will initiate, which is kind of the the, uh, the meat of the, uh, the computation process. The most important things that you define is here. So a, as you see, we can actually um, take a look at the mesh that is sent to the solver. Note that now our uh, solution domain is divided to computational cells so we do not really have any surface anymore we only have a grid a grid which is generated based on that surface so how do we set up the model now so on the left there are various ways to do it you can go uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the bar on the top of the menus but I always prefer to use the left tree so first thing to do usually is to check so if you click on check the solver will uh, look into the mesh and make sure uh, everything is correct it gives you actually some statistics like the minimum x coordinate y x coordinate and all that uh, since this is a very simple geometry the check does not take much time and the information is not very helpful but in a very in complicated geometry sometimes you have generated mesh uh, cells that are negative in uh, in volume yeah that may sound a little bit funny but that, that happens in a very complicated geometry and when you do click check then the software is going to tell you there are negative volumes and you cannot proceed you have to go back and modify your check so always click check when you see it done here uh, it's telling you that um, it's a good mesh to proceed you can also report uh, um, click on report quality the report quality will uh, look uh, kind of studies the quality of the mesh it may uh, give you some warnings or errors if your mesh is too skewed or uh, there are elements that are not uh, useful for uh, for the solver now once we're done with uh, with general we're going to do a steady state computation so we're not changing this here uh, this um, menu a pressure based solver is most of the things we do in CFD and it's a 2d uh, planar uh, computations now moving on to model I can have I can model different configuration different scenarios in some cases you can measure a multi-phase uh, flow you may have heat transfer for which you need to turn on the energy equation you can actually model turbulence so if I click on viscous then it is giving me different variety of models I can do an inviscid um, calculation which means the viscosity of the flow is negligible we don't want that we want to keep the viscosity uh, we can solve the laminar configuration uh, laminar equations of uh, motion or bunch of uh, turbulence modeling uh, equations that are used and we're going to look into them uh, later so for now we just go with the laminar so the default is good for us now if I go to materials if I click on materials I can in fact um, select the material that I'm going to be using. Note that this is just uh, the loading phase. Later on we will assign 
uh, different materials to different parts of the solution but for now for example I, I have air I can click on air it's showing me this menu uh, there are properties of air if there is a specific material that you want fluent has a database you can click here and find the material that you want but in either case you have control over the values of properties um, actually in this calculation I want to use a density of one kilograms per meter cubed uh, for air and I want to change the viscosity of air to one times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms per meter second I select these and I click on change create and then close it. by default it also has an aluminum but as a solid but we do not really have any solid um, geometry in our solution domain remember that we do not really model the solid part we only model uh, the flow which is the flow of air on top of the plate so uh, keep that in mind now moving forward we have the cell zone conditions I open this so that you know uh, we can choose the material that we, we, we have adjusted before so if I click here it's telling me you can choose air um, I cannot choose aluminum because uh, this area is chosen to be a fluid so for now I keep it as is now the most important part of our uh, setup is setting up the boundary conditions boundary conditions are going to give physical meaning to uh, to the math that this software is solving uh, I start with um, let's start with the plate so if I click on plate it is going to open a window like this uh, it's a stationary wall uh, with no slip condition so the flow is has zero velocity on the surface of this stationary wall and that's it there is no other thermal radiation or any other thing that we can change so we can simply click OK if I go to the inlet if I double click on inlet then it is going to open another type of boundary condition automatically the software understands that inlet is most likely and velocity inlet uh, if I don't like that choice I always have the option of changing the type of the boundary condition for example I can click on this menu and gives me a bunch of different types of boundary conditions that I can assign I can assign it as a mass flow in red uh, inlet outflow uh, pressure outlet symmetry and all that but velocity inlet is actually what I want in this point so I keep it as is uh, on the velocity inlet menu I can define the magnitude of the velocity um, so you can you have control over how this velocity is defined for example here as you see uh, I can select different method for velocity specification I can say okay I want to give magnitude and direction so I, in this scenario I have to give uh, the software the magnitude of the velocity and then give X component and Y component or I can do just the components or I can do magnitude normal to the boundary in this case the flow is going to be parallel to the plate therefore it will be normal to my uh, boundary line therefore I use magnitude normal to the boundary I clip the uh, keep the reference frame as ab uh, absolute and I assign the velocity that I know is one meters per second down here you see supersonic initial gauge pressure for uh, subsonic flows we can just always keep that at zero so when I click on OK um, so now I, I have two other boundaries to deal with let's start with the outlet if I click on outlet um, as you see by default 
the, the software understands that an outlet is most likely a pressure outlet. So it opens a different type of uh, window for me in which I can select um, the gauge pressure. The gauge pressure of um, the local value of gauge pressure basically. So keeping the gauge pressure at zero is just telling the software that it's an atmospheric condition here. There is no uh, pressure build up or, or you know compressed situation the gauge pressure is zero so keep that as zero and you can have control over backflow for now we do not really deal with that backflow corresponds to situations that the flow is reversed and maybe sucked into the solution domain and this simple configuration you do not expect to have that so we, we don't worry about it we click on OK the only condition that the only boundary that we have not dealt with yet is uh, the far field pressure or the top boundary. So again, I click on that. Um, by default, it is selected as pressure fall, far field. Uh, I don't like this type because I think it's easier for the software to work with the symmetry. Symmetry line is just telling the software, okay, just mirror. What you see were as a uh, with respect to this boundary uh, upper boundary click on that and make it okay so the the top boundary is now uh, chosen to be a symmetry line for the interior l flow there's nothing you need to do you can just keep it as is um, we don't worry about dynamic mesh or uh, reference value at this point we can proceed to the solution in the methods. Um, most of the time you can keep these uh, as default. There are situations we may want to use a different scheme for coupling pressure and viscosity, velocity, but we keep it as simple algorithm for now. Uh, we always work with second order pressure and second order upwind momentum equation. So second order is of course more accurate than first order. Uh, clicking on control, these are some constants. At this point, we do not worry about those, so we keep them as is. Uh, the thing we want to change is the monitor. So if I click on monitors, uh, I can find the residuals here. Again, double click on residuals, open a different uh, menu for me. And what this menu is, uh, I have control over uh, the accuracy of uh, the solution that I want. So since this is simply a 2D flow uh, with no heat transfer, there are three governing equations. I have the continuity equation, X component of velocity and Y component of velocity. And on the right side here, we see uh, the absolute criteria for the residuals. The smaller the residuals, uh, the more accurate uh, my results. Therefore, I'm going to increase this from 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus uh, 6. And I do this for all of the equations, so I generate pretty accurate results. Of course, there is a penalty associated with decreasing these uh, residuals, and that's the computational time. Um, you have to wait more until the solution is converged. Now I'm ready, click OK, and at this point uh, I'm pretty ready to initialize the run. If I click on initialize or initialization here, a menu for, will be open uh, on the, uh, under this task page for me. There are two different ways of initializing a model. We can always do a standard initializing. Uh, and what initialization is, um, is basically the, uh, the initial guess that you need in order to solve uh, this set of differential equations. You need to start with something and solve uh, the governing equations iteratively. You will see later that the values that you use here may in fact help the convergence of the code or if your guesses are too uh, wild or they do not make sense, your computational time can increase. 
So I can select, uh, let's say we initialize from inlet and we click on initialize. If you select something else, your solution shouldn't really change. Now, at this point, I'm ready to uh, run my model. So in order to do that, I click on run calculation a new page is open for me and I have control over the number of iterations. By default it is set as zero which doesn't make sense. Now I'm going to increase it to a relatively large number. As soon as the solution converges and my residuals are smaller than my convergence criteria, the solution will stop. Therefore having a very large number here is not going to you know generate any uh, any bad sides yeah, the only problem is that if your solution is not converging then it's going to go all the way to this huge number now I'm ready I can uh, click on calculate and the rest will be just sitting back and looking at uh, the solution being converged what you see here on this plot is on the x-axis you have the iterations and on the y-axis you have the oh, solutions already converged. The y-axis is the residuals of each equation that the software is solving. As we said, we have we are solving three equations: continuity equation, x velocity, and y velocity. And once the residual of all these three uh, equations are smaller than one times ten to the negative minus ten to the negative six, then the solution is uh, converged. That's the, that's the um, configuration that uh, we, we selected. We could have selected a different value for convergence criteria and it's in our hand. If I want the more accurate results I can actually go here to the residuals and say I want more accurate. Why not just going to 1 times 10 to the minus 7. At some situations it may actually make sense. I can again click on uh, go to run calculation and click calculate. The solution will uh, continue um, until the smaller residuals is met. As easy as that. Okay now we're ready to look at the results. So for doing that, I always recommend you to go to File menu and save the project before you lose anything. Now you have different ways of looking at the results that you generated. You can always use the results section here or you can go and use the CFD post software which is uh, another software used specifically for uh, monitoring the results. Sometimes it's easier to use CFT for, uh, pose, sometimes it's easier just to look at the results in Salt Fluent, so you should be able to do both. For example, if I go to graphics here and the results, I can generate a contour plot. So I click on a contour plot um, and I want to see how the velocity distribution will look like. I click save and this is what I see. So in the uh, in the contour plot, contour plot as you see now uh, we have a uh, color bar on the left so the values closer to this dark blue uh, is telling us that the velocity is almost zero or very small. The more the colors approach uh, the red color, uh, we are having a larger velocity. Contour plots are always good tools to have uh, some qualitative idea of what the solution is uh, getting at. Sometimes you can really see that your solution is not correct by looking at the plot, but let's see if this one makes sense. Well, clearly I can see the formation of the boundary layer um, on on top of the plate. So if I zoom, let's say here, I can see that the velocity is zero on the surface. It slowly increases and it gets to the values that um, 
are closer to the inlet. Um, now I can also do vector analysis so I can go here click on vectors then click display it is going to give me a, a vector plot so smaller vectors here a larger vector here which is showing me the, the direction of velocity here so same tool but with different uh, um, appearance. I can actually increase the the size of these arrows if I just put five here then uh, the shape of uh, the control the vector plot will change uh, slightly. Uh, we can actually skip some of them but sometimes that's not very helpful like this one so doesn't make sense for us to do it here. Uh, I can click on path lines here and select path lines that are released from the inlet. Um, click on display. The path lines kind of show the trajectory of particles um, as we expect uh, the particles here will move in parallel to the flow so nothing um, exciting there. But now, again, I want to proceed to CFD post, so I click Save Project, OK. And I can safely close my solver. And doing this, now I have more check marks. Now, once we execute the model and our solution is converged, now I have a solution which is also checkmarked, which is telling me the results are ready to be viewed. So now I click on CFD post. So CFD post again is, uh, is ran on a 3D situation. By default, I can click on Z. Then I have a variety of tools here that I can use uh, to look at my results. Uh, like before, I can define a contour plot. Let's say I uh, open a contour plot, contour 1, click OK. Then I want this to be, uh, I want the location to be uh, this, uh, the entire domain, basically all domains. And I click on Apply. And it's going to generate uh, a control plot of pressure here for me. Uh, you have control over number of the colors you want. For example, if I increase this to 50 and click apply, then I'm going to have 50 colors, more high quality uh, contour plots is generated in this case for me. If I am interested in a different contour plot, I can go to variable and choose, for example, velocity magnitude, click apply, and I see a better contour plot for velocity. Um, this is exactly what we saw in Fluent, but now you can get a better view in, um, in the CFT Post software. OK, now one important thing that we can do, we can plot the values of different parameters everywhere on this solution domain. Uh, for example, if I click on this chart icon here up here and define a chart, calling, I call that chart 1, then a menu is open here. I, I want to kind of manage the, the XY plot that's going to be generated here. So the X value, I want the X value to be uh, the velocity in X direction. And the Y value, I want it to be um, actually the location Y. So if I click Apply, it's telling me the data series location is missing, uh, which is the reason we, we do not have any. I have to go uh, here 
data series and define a location where do you want to uh, well, so plot this values from so I have to first define a let me show you this contour first I have to first uh, define a line here at the let's say at bot at the very uh, far right of the solution domain I define a line here and then I plot everything that I want on that line so I need to go up here insert location then line I can assign any name I want to the line. Let's keep it as line one. Now uh, you have control over f this solu uh, this um, the 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 location of the line. You can do different methods. You can do two points or um, others for lines. You can actually just do two two uh, points. So first point I assign here so x will be 1 y will be 0 and z is 0 because this is a 2d geometry anyways now point 2 I want to assign the top right corner of the model so the x value will be 1 the y value will be 0.5 and uh, the z value will be 0 and then I can click on apply when I do that again I can select chart here and tell the software to plot the values I want along line one. So again, x axis is u velocity in x direction, and y axis is the uh, the location, uh, the uh, the y coordinate of the location. And I click apply. This is what uh, we will get. So as you see, there's a sharp um, point here this is because we don't have enough data points if I go to line here I can increase the sample size to let's say 100 and then click apply this will make a smooth transition because that's uh, at, hun at 10 samples I'm skipping too many uh, points there so this is uh, my results coming from uh, solution from uh, fluent solutions now uh, we also have an analytical solution for uh, the flu on a flat plate uh, Blasius came up with that and I have already generated the values I want to compare the analytical results with the computational results here in order to do that I come to the chart and go to the data series and open a new data series but this time instead of you know plotting something from the computations I go to file and I try to find the data file that I have for the analytical solution and I have for the flat plate flow over flat plate I copy the location and I paste it here and it's a CSV or comma separate value file click open and then click apply so as you see the now the, the X axis is the velocity in X direction so the more I move in this direction the higher the velocity in Y direction is the distance from the uh, from the horizontal plate um, the analytic as you see there's a good match between analytical solution and computational solution we do not expect that these two match 100% but the trends and appearance should be in the good in, in good shape uh, as you see there is a uh, overshoot in velocity and you one may think this is uh, some computational artifact but turns out that is not uh, the case in order to explain this I need to go back here and look at the contour plots of velocity so what happens is the flow outside the boundary layer does not even feel the presence of uh, this plate so as we move from the left to the right the flow has to be squeezed in 
and uh, move faster in order to compensate for uh, the fact that there is now a smaller cross-section area for the uh, for the flow to go therefore uh, you'll see that the velocity increases and then decreases very slightly so these this overshoot uh, actually makes sense so one question that you may have is that why the analytical solution of series 2 here does not go beyond uh, point 0.2 uh, the reason is that the uh, the analytical solution by Blasius does not work outside uh, the boundary layer however my CFD calculations can well uh, you know be you be uh, referred to outside the boundary layer because it's not the only thing we model so although the agreement is uh, is good but we uh, we don't see anything uh, for analytical solution uh, at locations far away uh, from the surface okay now you have a good understanding of how the software works at this point you can generate all kinds of other um, um, outputs for example again I can click on vector okay then I can say okay the location uh, of my uh, I want to have the vector plus on the entire solution domain here click on this you see it's been over uh, superimposed on the contour plot so I can turn off the contour plot by clicking on this guy and again I can simply see uh, the contours here so the vector plots uh, for this case is not very helpful we do not really gain anything by looking at it but you will see later that for complicated geometries uh, it can be uh, very helpful to see